now. Why would I say no to that? Why would I, I say no to that? That's so like, nostalgic and we can listen to like all our little space jams and yes! all our... <laughs> we just don't feel like skating today. We're just going to take a nap in the car. <laughs> I think Shira's going to be mad at us probably. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Shira. And, yeah, that's like one of the things I told the producer was afterwards when we were talking and she was like, are you so excited? And I was like, yes, now I can like finally be like, ah, excited, you know? Right. It's like just even the fact that I get to like tie my skates and strap on my skates mm -hmm. is like therapeutic in itself. Do you know what I mean? I do. I totally do. Hello, hello. Today, I've got a special guest for you. She is a stay-at-home mom of four children who posted a picture. Can we put that on here? Like this picture on her Facebook page and it went viral. She was on platforms worldwide. She was on CNN, Good Morning America, many other social platforms. And then she was lucky enough to end up on the Drew Barrymore show. But she was the first guest ever on her segment, Mom's Time Out. And we're gonna talk about that today. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It's a big one with a huge surprise at the end. She and I have been friends for decades. We grew up together, we figure skated together, we traveled in the car a lot, so there was a lot of jamming out to music, and there was a lot of boy talk. And it turned into girl talk as we started working with women and helping them all things beauty and empowering women, and I am so happy to have her now here with us, Miss Jana Coombs. Hey, what's up? Thanks for being here. Welcome to Multiform PTSD, where we talk about non-military related post-traumatic stress, complex PTSD, abuse recovery, and mental wellness in general. So glad you're here. I am Tracy Flowery. I am so glad to be here. So let's just go ahead and get started. Let's do it. Hello, Miss Jana. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm good. How are you is a better question. Doing good. Doing good. good. Hanging you, in there. Yeah. You've had a lot going on. Yeah, it's been busy to say the least. <laughs> oh, kidding. Did you have any idea when you posted that picture of your dear son, Ezra, that it was going to go viral on you like this? You know, I knew it was a statement photo because I hesitated to post it on Facebook. So I knew that there was some controversy within the photo, but I wanted to post it to show other families that they're not alone because what everybody is going through right now with either virtual or in school COVID, mm -hmm. it's just so much to handle. And then adding in being a teacher is like impossible for some. So right. I knew it was controversial, but no, I did not know that it was going to reach all the platforms that it did. <laughs> Crazy. And the thing is, yeah. I didn't realize how viral it went because, like, I saw your post and I saw your stuff, mm -hmm. but I see your stuff all the time. So it wasn't until you finally right. posted, like, we went viral and, oh, by the way, I'm going to be <laughs> on the show. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Once People Magazine got a hold of it, it, like, took off drastically from there. Right. Tell us what even, what made you take the picture and, and post it? You said that you knew there was some controversy there. What was your final, like... I'm going to do this. I took the photo because my mom had asked me, how's virtual learning going? It's your first day. How's it going? Cause she knew how nervous I was about it. And right. my expectations for it were not very high because I have four kids, one being an infant. So I was like, how am I going to juggle this? Right. Um, so that is why I took the photo. Cause I sent it to her to say, this is reality. And then I was like, this is probably a lot of people's reality, not just my own. Right. And then thinking about it, I'm like, I'm going to post this for other families to see that, you know what, you're not alone. This is our first day. How is your first day going? Because ours isn't starting off very well. <laughs> so, it just breaks my heart. Like you said, it broke your heart. Like it, it broke my heart too. It, it wasn't staged. Exactly. It was, it was real life. You can just feel the emotion coming from it. It, it was a beautifully really done beautiful. picture to just catch that candid moment that, so, like you said, so many people can resonate with. Yeah, there I've since gotten so many messages from people sending me almost the exact same photos of their kids and not just being kindergartners. I mean, they're middle schoolers and some parents are saying their teenager is struggling with all the freedom that they have and trying to oh. learn how to do time management at that age. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I struggle with time management. I can't even imagine as a teenager being yeah. like, hey, here's all your school. 
Yeah. You know, it's the maturity <laughs> level is, it's hard. Yeah. And, and I don't think personally, I don't think it's for everyone. I don't think that, I mean, some kids are really going to struggle with that. I think most kids are going to struggle with that. Cause like you said, the maturity to have that kind of balance and time management, a lot of adults don't have that, let alone to ask high schoolers, middle schoolers, right. your, your elementary students. I think it's hard enough keeping kids' attention as it is in a classroom, let alone just mm -hmm. staring at a computer screen for so long that that just wears on anybody's mental health. Right. And in their home where they know where the snacks are, they know where, you know, the TV might be playing in the background or, I mean, the distractions right. are endless for me. I can't imagine as a child. <laughs> I know that was a huge one is like not being able to have the TV on all the distractions that were within the house and having the kids spread out so that their Zoom calls weren't interfering with each other's. Right. But on the flip side for parents, it's like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't vacuum. I couldn't, you know, watch the news. Mm -hmm. You have to be quiet on every little thing that you're doing. I had to try to keep a baby quiet from crying. <sighs> and yes, they can use headphones, but at the same time, they need help all the time. So you have to kind of listen and be like, okay, what is the teacher saying so I can try to help you? Right. So it was like your whole life is put on pause while you're trying to accommodate being a teacher and helping your children be right. good students. And you had three, correct? You have four total. Yeah, you have three, three four teachers total, three to listen to. Life. Yeah, that's crazy. That yeah, crazy. fourth, second, and kindergarten. Those are not easy ages. So all know. elementary. When all this went viral, can you can you talk to us about how that went for for you and your family? As far as that had to take up more of your time and attention. And I saw on one of your posts that you even had like mean negative comments and messages and that just yeah, that blows crazy. my mind it just it it blows my mind that people can be so mean sometimes online and right now i feel like mm. emotions are really high and hot with politics and the covid pandemic mm -hmm. and 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 the the riots and the the social aspects i feel like everyone's yeah. just like their nerves are like on edge and everyone's ready to blow but something like this that i feel like we all can relate to, but I understood right. it. Or at least so, have be given the choice because at first we weren't even given the choice or option to choose right. virtual or in face-to-face. -face. That was another whole reason behind posting the photo was people need to see that we're struggling. And I told my husband, I was like, you know, I'm hesitant to post this, but if no one speaks up, then nothing changes. Right. So I spoke up. I'm saying we need the option for most face-to-face -face learning is ideal. Mm -hmm. And if you feel comfortable sending your children to school, having that option should be a priority for most counties. Right. Um, and not given that option was just frustrating in itself. Mm -hmm. And I think of, I mean, how lucky you are that you are a stay at home mom, but I think of those Very. who don't have that option. They have, they're either a single right. parent like myself or both parents are working out of the home and having to mm -hmm. figure all this out, like it was just stressful. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. I can't. But I don't I need had to diminish. In that position. I'm sure you did. No, I'm not sure. at all. That would make that's another level of like juggling everything on top of life. I can't even imagine. So so I mean I'm sure you also got great feedback as well. You don't end up on CNN yeah. and People and Good Morning America and the Drew Barrymore show without getting a lot of yeah, positive so feedback. Cool. Awesome, we will talk about yeah, that, I no, promise. Was. How, give me the good, the bad, and the ugly. We want it all. It started <laughs> off with most people being super encouraging. I, you know, my message inbox started flooding and reading on was like, okay, yeah, see this, that was my purpose, was it is reaching a lot of families and they are in the same position. So if we all just kind of stick together or vent together, or whatever, at least it takes a little stress off of us knowing that you're not alone. Right. Um, but then after several days, you started getting and seeing the hate comments and the post just blew up with so many hurtful and harmful comments that I started reading them and you go down that rabbit hole and it's just not healthy. So I was like, uh, after 2.1 million comments or whatever it was, I was like, they weren't all hateful at that right. stage, but there was plenty that were, I shut the comments off, but left it just for my friends to be able to comment. Right. Because my mental health could not take reading that. I'm a people pleaser. So hearing mm -hmm. that just kind of broke my heart. And I was like, how can you comment on a little boy's photo? And most of the comments were 
clearly weren't even looking at the picture. They were just keyboard warriors wanting to start drama or whatever. And it just wasn't healthy. So I just stopped reading them. And after People Magazine and CNN and all the other interviews that we did, I didn't read the comments unless it was a comment that was directly sent to me in a personal email or message. Then I took the time to respond to everybody. That was important to me to be able to respond to everybody. Mm -hmm. So after that, I just stopped reading them because everybody has an opinion and I value everybody's opinion, but I didn't want to read any negative or hurtful comments. Right. And, and I love how you said, you know, everyone has a right to their opinion, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it has to be your business, what their opinion is. If it's going to hurt you, um, how about with your husband, and your kids? I'm sure your husband knew that you were getting some yeah. of the other comments. Did you share any of that with your kids? Did your kids know that any of the negative no. stuff was coming? No. Nope. Um, my husband obviously was aware, but he kind of just did the same, didn't read the negative comments. Um, but my children now, they don't know anything about it. They just know that it's positive, the meaning behind the photo, why I posted it, and that's it. We left the negative stuff away from them. I, I respect that. Can I ask, what were some of the negative, like, because my mind just goes, like, what was there even negative to say? <laughs> like, I don't understand. I mean, that's what I was like, some of that come off the top of my head. The one that I, some that I've read was, why isn't she sitting there helping him go be a mother and do your job? You know, that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, I stepped away from the computer. There was a stool there. There's a baby monitor there. My husband was there helping as well. Right. You know, so it was just, we are so quick to assume or put our personal opinions in there that you don't even know the true story. Right. Um, those basically just that, and some just blatantly rude that I don't even want to repeat. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Like that just aren't appropriate. <laughs> yeah. But most of it was just, you know, there was a lot of be thankful for your situation. Why are you complaining? which I am thankful for my situation. I am thankful mm -hmm. that my kids have the Chromebooks from the school. I'm thankful that our teachers were great and supportive. I'm thankful that I was a stay at home mom. The situation can always be worse or can always be better, right. but it doesn't take it away from our reality. Exactly. All trauma is trauma and mm -hmm. pain is pain. And whether it's physical, emotional. So thank you for being, thank you for being strong enough. You knew ahead of time that this could have become negative and you did it anyway because you wanted right. to speak up and I applaud you. I, I really truly do because Thank honestly you. with, I try and stay very politically neutral and you know, I, I don't yeah. want to speak out on some things, but there's times where I really would like to, but honestly, if I'm being completely honest, it's I get scary. scared. Yeah. I do because I'm yeah, like, no, Ooh. and I tried to keep a lot of political stuff out of it too, mm -hmm. you know, of my beliefs with certain things going on through COVID. I didn't right. want that. It was more just like what we are going through as a family, myself and my children. Right. And I just want to speak out to knowing you personally on a very personal level. You are an amazing yeah. mom. You are a good wife. You have one oh, of the kindest you. hearts I've ever known. So for me, I wanted to have you on here to like support you as much of anything else oh, thank you. and be like, this thank girl's you. the real deal. And you're out there trying to help and support other moms and families and kids going through all of this. And I just had to support you in that. I, and, and to kind thank of you. like stand up for you guys a little bit. Like, I know you're a good person. I know you're a good mom. I mean, it's one snapshot right. of a picture, one moment. You don't know what's going on all around it. It, was, it looked like a very exactly. zoomed in picture. And you just see like this yep. much. I didn't want to get too close to him. And I, so I kind of took a picture from afar and zoomed in, which is kind of why it's a little pixely. And it was just like a quick, like, I'm taking this photo to send to my mom. And then after, like I said, I realized maybe I'm going to post this. Go ahead and speak on... What did you do right after you took that picture? What did you do? I called him over. I put my phone down. I called him over and we actually sat on the living room floor and just hugged. And I just wiped his tears away. I had tears myself and was like, it's okay. We're going to get through this. There, it's not just you that's frustrated. Mommy's frustrated too. And it's okay to have these emotions. Just was supportive and gave him praise and 
I shut first we shut the computer to just like we need a time out like we need a break we need to breathe and right. take this moment to just comfort him so that's what that's what happened after the photo and then um, once we collected ourselves both of ourselves <laughs> we got back on and finished school <laughs> even us as adults sometimes i feel like we just need to like put the phone away put the computer away just like time out take a breath yeah. cry scream Whatever you got, you know, go for, for sure. a run, yoga, whatever you got to do. Take a break. Take care of Eat yourself. Ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Double date with Ben and Jerry, you know. and <laughs> and and then move forward. I I think that yes. was an incredible lesson that you taught him there as well. So many messages and lessons for him to learn that I feel like those naysayers are completely missing so many great teaching opportunities just in your story just in that picture i'm i'm also very glad that you just decided to just quit reading them and quit even letting people comment that didn't it's not worth no anybody's time to let people break you down like that so it was mm -hmm. just better to just not read them and i can't control you know who comments on cnn or yahoo or whatever but right i can control how i read them and go about my day <laughs> So that was me on the first night all of this started I I going down that rabbit hole. I'm like, and then I couldn't sleep and I was like, nope, I can't do this. No kidding. No kidding. Well, so, so many lessons just in that short part of our conversation. Like, I feel like I could be like, eh, right? done, but we have so much more I want to talk about. <laughs> but thank you for being so candid and speaking out and You're being welcome. that voice because I truly believe most people are going to see the message and your intention yeah because i just feel like sometimes the those with negative things to say sometimes are just louder unfortunately i don't think they're a majority i just think they're louder and and that's yeah, i on, can agree with that and that's on them and kudos to you for teaching your kids and your family that lesson as well thank you you're welcome because your kids are now back in school correct yes right they're back in school all of them <laughs> so what was the hardest part of the virtual learning and how did that change how you went back to school? Like the feelings and the changes. Ooh, I think there's so many hardest parts. Honestly, it was like a multi-level hard. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. It was just hard. Yeah. Um, the hardest part was one, I'm not getting any sleep at night. So from having an infant and trying to take care of him. So then trying to be like, available and my mind being awake to teach was tough. Thankfully, my husband is home a lot in the morning. So he was a huge help with virtual learning. Oh, um, so I think just trying to juggle everything with how do you maintain a household? How do you go grocery shopping? How do you do all this stuff? Because everything has to be packed in from 5 p.m. on because from 8 till 3, they're on the computers and you have to be quiet and do nothing. Right. So it was like, to try to juggle everything was just tough um, on top of having no time for yourself as well. Right. I mean, as a mom, I think most moms can relate that we give so much of ourselves to our family mm -hmm. and to our children that there's only a tiny bit left for you that keeps us sane. And then <laughs> having that taken away as well was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what do it's I um, do? It was almost it's, you like survival you gained mode. a whole nother full-time job. I mean, you became a full-time job really? of being a teacher as well as a mom and a wife and a cook and having an infant for crying out loud. That's a job in and of itself. I, I can't right. even, I can't even imagine. So yeah, it was just too much, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. too much. So how was the transition and how are your kiddos doing now? they love being back in school and that was the one thing it wasn't just me being like oh i want my kids in school for myself it was this was hard on them too mm -hmm. this was hard for their mental health of not being able to see their friends outside this tiny little box on a computer i'm right. um, not being able to talk and socialize with them right. and on top of trying to keep up on a computer that sometimes you can't get into the zoom call because it's like freezing or whatever these computers are not brand new that they give them mm -hmm. they're slow and so that transition going back to school was seamless. Honestly, it was, they were super excited. They had such an amazing first day of meeting their teachers and they came home all excited. You know, there is the, they do have to wear masks here and there, but our school has been really well with having the desks far enough apart, which still breaks my, breaks my heart, but that they're not having to wear masks all the time. They right. can go outside without masks on and 
I know this, this gets into a little controversial political stuff, but I had a hard time sending them back to school with the masks. Mm -hmm. um, and kids are resilient, so they would rather be there with masks on and see their friends than be home virtual learning. So yeah. I took what they wanted into account as well. It wasn't just me. Right. Right. And I think that's important. I know we, we had the option at the beginning of the year, whether we wanted to do virtual or in class. And I looked at Corbin and I said, I knew what his answer would be. What do you want to do? What are exactly. you comfortable with? And he was like, I don't want to go to school. And I was like, all right, I'm in. And at the beginning of the school year, we didn't have, they didn't have to wear masks even like, cause like you said, they really we were separated enough. We didn't have in the County, we had like two active cases. So like, nice. Yeah, it really wasn't, this county wasn't a huge deal. You know, we ha they had two weeks without it, and then they, bang, everyone has to wear masks all the time, most of the time. Um, and actually, that transition, it was, a, it was a minor backup, but to the kids, it was a huge backup, and it made a That's lot hard. of them extra stressed. I mean, my son doesn't do great with change anyway. Um, and that was really hard because he is yeah. a face reader. Like he reads people's emotions on their that's, face. He's very intuitive. And he, yeah. I feel like that took like so much of the communication off for him. It's like, he doesn't know. When you cover half of our face, that is a huge expression. It just becomes a cold environment. Yes. And there's, whether you feel that masks work or not, there's a lot of other factors that go into our mental health of wearing these masks and physical. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. It's not, it's not a one size fits all here. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't think we went too political because here I focus on mental health, right? And, and whether you have right. you know, PTSD or not, or depression or anxiety, I have noticed a lot of people that didn't have it before, like they're noticed their anxiety is up with, with the whole pandemic and the COVID and masks, no masks and, how they feel about masks. Do they work? Do they not work? I, I feel like that has just really affected a lot of people's mental health, whether they have an illness 100%. or a diagnosis or not. And so I don't want to alienate either side because I, I feel like everyone has a valid their story. Yeah. yeah. Has their, their story, their viewpoint, yeah. their, their reasoning. And I don't want to tell them how to think. I want to be here for both sides. But I also want to bring attention to the fact, like you said, there's more to it than just keeping you know, people away from COVID. There is the mental health side of this. There is other things we need to consider as well. But there are other factors that are just as important. And I think what we see a lot in the mental health world is mental health issues are taboo. We don't talk about them and they're not as bad right. as physical ailments or injuries. And I don't believe I, yeah. that to be true. It is. And that's why I'm glad you were able to speak up and say, wait, let's look at this around the circle. Let's look at all of the aspects here and do what's best for us and our family and our kids. And let's make this more of a conversation. And I think you opened it up and I, I applaud you for it. I, I truly, truly do. Thank you. Let's kind of move on. So you had a lot of interviews with different news and like you said, you know, Good Morning America mm -hmm. and CNN, and then you went on the Drew Barrymore show. Yeah. How did that even happen for one? <laughs> um, Facebook, actually. One of the producers messaged me on Facebook and gave me his number and said, hey, I work with Drew Barrymore. She's starting a um, a talk show and we'd really love to talk to you. So I was like, okay. So I, I messaged him back and called him, or I think I messaged him back my number and then he ended up calling me like right that second. And, um, we chatted and he said, okay, well, just wanted to kind of talk to you and hear your stories. Like I really enjoyed talking to you. I'm going to pass you on to the producer above me. And then she contacted me and we talked and they all, it just kind of fell in place from there. And it, we talked for a few weeks before the show actually happened. Like they contacted me pretty much right away. So, oh, okay. But what an awesome opportunity. Can you talk about how that was? I mean, it looked like you had like camera crews in your home and no. So it, they're so good at making, you know, everything look like so professional, which was uh -huh. nice. 
but actually there was no camera crews in my house. Um, they just asked for B-roll. So a lot of that taken was my husband or my daughter taking stuff. And then oh, we had to okay. just send it into them. So cool. yeah, that they had said, ideally in a non COVID world, we would be sending a crew out to your house for a day to follow you around. Right. Part of me was like, okay, well, I'm kind of thankful COVID's here because that would be really weird by having like a crew in my house, <laughs> but it all works out. Yeah. So cool. And we got on a zoom call like this and I got to watch them taping the show and then they're kind of just like, all right, Jana, you're going to be queued in in like 10 seconds. And then it just happened. <laughs> the interview happened. So what was the big surprise Drew had for you at the end? Yeah. <laughs> so the whole point that they wanted to take was not a political side either. They wanted it to be more of like what moms are going through, what families are going through. Mm -hmm. And they had talked to me about what I had done prior to kids and before COVID. And I was like, well, I was a figure skater and that was like my life, my world. Mm -hmm. And then I was a coach, but then since we've moved down here, that kind of has been a huge hole in my heart because there's no rink close by here. Right. Um, and it's like, there is one in Atlanta, but Atlanta traffic is nuts. And it's always, you know, you know, after school times or early mornings. So I deal with right. young children that just doesn't, it's not going to work right. right now in my life anyway. Right. So they surprised me with an ice rink, a synthetic ice rink. It's a, called Polyglide. And one of the owners was so generous to donate the ice rink, but, you can, it's, it's portable. Like you can actually lay down outside or it has to be on a hard surface. Okay. So it can either go outside or you can put it in like a garage or wherever it fits your needs actually. So it's pretty cool. So temperature doesn't matter. Um, he said temperature doesn't technically matter, but the elements of outside, like if you would just have to pressure wash it to basically get all like the dirt and debris off. Oh, okay. So that's what he was like. Ideally it's best for basements or a garage somewhere that you can keep it clean from, right so not nicking it or scuffing it or so what are you gonna where are you gonna put it and when will it be there so i he i got the email that it was ordered um and it has not arrived yet so i don't know when it's gonna be here it's i think it's like in transit but um ah! i think it's ideally gonna go in our garage right now okay. because we don't have a basement and being outside Georgia, it rains like all the time. Like we'll just get, oh, yeah. it's kind of like more of that tropical climate mm -hmm. in the summer and with a dog and Kate, like ideally pressure washing it every single time is just not really going to work. Right. It would mean so you probably would use it, it less. Not dirty. Right. Exactly. So I think it's going to go in the garage. I'm so excited. For yeah. You. So <laughs> I was like, I know. What? I'm really excited to <laughs> do I was shocked. I, I remember I contacted you after I watched it and I was like, did you know? Because like, you were I in know such That's shock. Why my face was like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like. I know. I didn't even know how to react because I was like, "How's that gonna happen?" It's like I didn't even uh, like realize what it was because I'm just sitting here thinking, "Cold ice rink, Georgia." Like, that gonna be in my backyard in Georgia, right? So it took me a it took me a hot second to like understand what they were saying, <laughs> right? Right. Well, I just remember being like, she's so calm. Like I was freaking out. I, wa I watched it. It was like later at night I had it, you know, I DVR'd it. And so I watched it as I was like, going, getting ready for bed and I'm laying there and I literally was like, ah! like I was so excited. Yeah. And mom, I was at my mom's house and she comes in and she's like, what, what's going on? Like, is everything okay? And I'm like, you're never going to guess what happened to Jana. <laughs> and she was, I like, what? I and I was like, I will have you watch it tomorrow. So the next day, the whole family, we all sat down. My mom, my dad, my sister's Aww, daughter, you. maybe two daughters, and a husband. Like, we all sat down and watched it together. And I was like, this is Jana. Like, I was, like, crying. Like, I'm such a dork. But Aww. I was so excited for you. And you were just so yeah, I was mellow. In shock. Yeah. <laughs> I was in shock. I didn't, like, I didn't even, like I said, comprehend it. And I was nervous. I'm on a Zoom call with Drew Barrymore. You know, right. like. Right. This is national television, so I'm sitting here trying to keep my composure and <laughs> dying inside, and then all of a sudden, they, like, I didn't know they were gifting me anything, so, like, especially an ice rink, right. I was just in shock, and then I was, like, trying to, like, process it and keep it cool, and then I was like, well, what? 
So yeah, it was not like the huge screamy response that like I would have gotten maybe not on TV, but I was just trying to keep my cool. And then that all happened. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> just in shock. That's all I can say. I was in shock. Two questions. And this might be kind of weird. Feel free no, to good. say no. Right. Would you be willing once your rank is in and it's a good time for your family and our family and the, the COVID and traveling and, and all of that. What if I came to visit and skate with you on your rink for like a, where are they now? Why would I say no to that? Why would I, don't I say know. no to that? That's so like nostalgic and we can listen to like all our little space jams and. Yes. Our... <laughs> it's funny. In my intro, all I talk about that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And our naps in the car because we were too tired to go skating. And we're like, we just don't feel like skating today. We're just gonna take a nap in the car. <laughs> I think Shira's gonna be mad at us probably. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Shira. And we both had the same coach at that time, didn't we? And, yeah, that's like one of the things I told the producer was afterwards when we were talking and she was like, Are you so excited? And I was like, Yes, now I can like finally be like, ah, excited, you know. Right. It's like just even the fact that I get to like tie my skates and strap on my skates mm -hmm. is like therapeutic in itself. Do you know what I mean? I do. I totally do. But one of the things for me is even just going to, when I lived in Austin, we went to a lot of hockey games and mm -hmm. like one of my favorite parts was walking into the rink part and you could smell it. I, would be I know. I, that I'm going to guess that this it probably smells like hockey sweat. <laughs> no, it didn't. Cause We're it wasn't, <laughs> it was like, it was like a, it was like an event center that they put ice in for games, but they had like a oh, bunch I'm of other stuff. Oh, I'm thinking of the Escanaba rink. I'm yeah, thinking no. Escanaba. Yeah, no. No, no, no. It was just like they but, put but ice in But I still in enjoyed like that rink smell. Yeah. Yeah. The high schoolers. Probably. I remember during the ice show in the high school locker room, it was the boys' high school <laughs> hockey <laughs> locker oh, room. Yeah, it was, so it was horrible. <laughs> Like you walk in, but yeah, and we were like, all so excited to have that locker room. <laughs> like it was like the best locker room, and we're like, don't even care how it smells. Like we that had our hairspray smelling like it up within fun. a day, anyway. <laughs> yeah, they probably didn't like coming back into it at all, smelling girly. <laughs> all the glitter, no. All the glitter. Oh, good times. So, I would love to come and skate with you again on your own private rink. What? What? So I know. Crazy. And. There's just so much that we took for granted, I feel like, back in the day, that now the little things is what I miss the most. Me too. I'll just start crying when I think about skating. I miss skating so, I so much. I hear ya. I'm, I'm almost two hours from a rink. Ugh. Yeah. That's probably about, like, even though mine's only a little over an hour with traffic, it's about that too. Right. Yeah. We, we love the sport, and as a skater, I loved it, and as a coach, I loved it. As a club director... I hated it. Hated it. Well, you have the politics side then. Though. Yes. You're in, like, within, and like, you know, we all know how that is. The other issue I had, you know, I'm in Iowa now, grew up in Michigan. Mm -hmm. The mindset and the focus is just different. Here it's more of a recreational. And it was very okay. recre recreational. But I was used to Michigan where it was very competitive and it was a focus. And yeah. if we had to be on the ice at six o'clock in the morning, then we were on the ice at six o'clock in the morning. So when I came down yeah. here and was coaching, I actually okay. brought in dance. None of them had ever done a dance what? in their life. Oh, wow. Yeah. I started the whole ice dance program because no one knew any of it. Like it was, it was just crazy to me. Like I was like, this isn't even a question. And that I was a up. huge part of your world. Yeah. Like you love dance. I loved it. Like dance. You're good at dance. I was in. Like, so like, it was just, it was just very different. And my friend, I was, I was leaving, uh, cause I moved to, to DC and my friend was like, you know, you need to get back to Michigan. And I was like, why? She goes, because you take skating way more seriously than we do here. Cause I just didn't get it. I didn't understand <laughs> because I didn't want to be on the ice at six in the morning when we were on the ice at six in the morning, an hour away every day in the summer. I, I know. Was gonna come in at eight. Like I was like, what? Like, and I got up earlier than I did in the school year, but I got up easier than I did during the school year because I was going skating. So I was happy. Right. right. 
But our it whole, was like Wednesdays. We were there from like 3 p.m. to 9 like at nine. night. Nine. Yeah. Wednesdays, <laughs> at, we were frozen. <laughs> I actually miss that, like taking your skates off and you know that thaw feeling, like where your feet just thaw out and it hurts really bad. <laughs> but I miss that. Like, I'm like, I just want that back. <laughs> yes. We are sick individuals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to have something, like you said, such be a, such a huge part of our life and part of our identity mm-hmm. and it not there anymore. Yeah. Like it literally, it's depressing. It is. And, and like you said, it was not only such a huge part of our life, it was part of our identity. I always say like <laughs> for my mental health, like that is, like I've said, something that is a hole in my heart and I struggle with daily because stepping on or just walking into that rank and smelling that or that just that first blade against the ice and that sound or seeing the fog on the boards Mm -hmm. was just therapeutic yes and if I could have that in my life I feel like I would be a better wife a better mother or whatever because that is my de-stressor right yeah I feel bad because I have you on on here and I'm like I don't have an ice ring to give you I don't have any great sponsors to like gift you but just chatting with you is fun though I I adore I adore you and I am oh, so happy and you, proud of you for how you've articulated thank yourself you. and you. handled this, this whole situation. Awesome oh well, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It's good. it really I mean, is a labor of love. Great too. Thank you. Yeah, because you're talking about a lot of issues that are dear to your heart, but also triggering probably for yourself. So to work through that and to help other people, I mean, you're a warrior, girl. Oh, thank you. But let's end this conversation, okay. this conversation with what is the one message you want to make sure that people out there get from your story? What would that message be? To use your voice that if no one speaks out, nothing changes. So to be courageous enough to post that picture or post that comment in it, in a delicate way where you're not offending everybody, but you're still trying to make that point across to use your voice because people are listening. Your voice does matter. Your reality matters. And your reality is probably reality for so many so that if we can just come together, fight for what we believe and what our children need, what ourselves need, then things start to change. And it takes a village. It's not just one person. My story is a small story. I'm one voice. By speaking up and being a voice for others, it triggers those people to speak up as well. And it's just a domino effect where change, you, you start to see change. That's beautiful. And I think you I did that saying. beautifully. I, I truly do. And maybe <laughs> I'm a little biased because I love you anyway, but I really think you did <laughs> yeah. an amazing job. And I think that that is obvious because the Drew Barrymore show and all of these news platforms wouldn't have you on if you weren't a good advocate for, for those in the same position and to stand up, whatever your position is, to be able to stand up, like you said, have a voice, use your voice and do it with respect, but you're not going to be the only one that has those feelings there. You're helping other yeah. people who maybe didn't have the voice to, to say that or to post that picture. And I applaud you. I really, truly do. I think you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here so much. And I'll be having you. It was a joy talking to you. To be continued. Yes. I want to come. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. And I know I can't compete with Drew Barrymore. So thank you so much for coming down to my level and coming here. Hey, wait a second. Before you go, I just wanted to say thank you to the guests who come on here and join us and truly make this podcast what it is. I want to thank you for being here and for listening and for all of your messages that you send me. I truly read each and every one of them individually and it keeps me going. So keep them coming. Thank you so, so much. I also wanted to let you know to go ahead and subscribe, like, comment this episode and any other episodes you may love that I have my website up now. It is www.multifarmptsd.com. And there you can find information about me, what we do, where you can look at our services. 
for a speaking engagement, or you really want to just work one-on-one -on -one with yours truly on some coaching programs and some free resources I've got for you. I am so excited about Bum, ba, da, da, customized game plans for recovering from trauma or just heightening your general mental wellness. I love it. I use the general game plan with the X's and O's like they use for football, but I make it just for you and your plan. Don't worry, you don't have to like football and you don't have to understand it to really get this program going for you. So excited, go to my website, go to resources, fill out, submit it. You're gonna get a response from me. I love it, you will love it too. So tell all your friends. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Multiform PTSD. Also email me at Tracy at MultiformPTSD.com. So thank you for being here. We'll see you next episode. Bye.